You're now listening to Shia, the era of our female-led society, a dramatic fiction audiobook series written by T. Erica the Oracle and presented by FemaleLedSociety.org. Chapter 2 Even though she literally grew up watching Glory lead the world, Rain still gets butterflies whenever she sees her face. At 26 years old, Rain's earliest memory is going to a parade in New York City with her mom when she was three and being hoisted onto her shoulder so she could see over the massive crowd. She remembers clapping and cheering as the floats went by and then waving both hands wildly when she saw Glory, the Shia Supreme, dressed in a gown adorned with jewels. She winked at me, Rain remembers. She looked right at me. Although Rain can't remember a time when women weren't celebrated leaders in society since she's only 26 years old, if you let her mom Janice tell it, Things weren't going well at all. One day, Janice sat down and told Rain the whole story about the shift. The period when our world changed from patriarchal to female-led. Janice told Rain that just after she was born, what used to be known as the United States has just elected its first female president The election had not gone over well because the majority of men in the United States were insecure and needed to feel superior to women so that they could feel validated by the foolish ideal of manhood that they were taught by other foolish men. Within weeks of the president's election, massive protests broke out in major cities across the United States. The various male supremacist clans came together to encourage hundreds of men and some women to express their outrage with the election in the United States. These protests could not be stopped. Crowds from coast to coast were seen carrying signs and shouting, the woman's place is in the home. Give us back our womanhood. Let a man be a man. The world watched in amazement as the male supremacy agitators became more aggressive, shouting insults at women as they passed in the streets and setting buildings on fire. The police were called in to arrest the protesters and when the majority were taken to jail, a new crop of protesters would take their place. When the tragic news broke that there had been an attempt to assassinate the female president of the United States, people began to panic. The world had underestimated the fragility of the male ego. Each burning building represented the insecure man's cry for help a last grasp at regaining control. Unbeknownst to the male supremacist groups, an underground group of women's leadership supporters had also formed and were waiting in the shadows to emerge. This assassination attempt was their signal. The next day, a billboard was erected in New York City's Times Square that had a simple black background with yellow chalk letters that read, Female-led society now. The same billboard began appearing in all major cities across the United States, and then other countries followed suit. Bolivia, Denmark, Philippines, and then Argentina, Iceland, France, and Panama. The appearance of the female-led society billboards enraged the male supremacist agitators so much that they staged a walkout on their jobs. This walkout shut down factories and decreased production, affecting the profits of the wealthy corporation leaders who then felt they needed to take a stand, but they had no idea how to do so while maintaining the premise of being politically correct. The underground group of women's leadership supporters then appeared on the scene sporting yellow bandanas on their wrists. They called themselves the FLS for Female Led Society. This peaceful demonstration of allegiance led citizens worldwide to choose a side or be presumed to be in alignment with the opposite. You were either a part of the FLS or you were a masculine agitator. One of the founding members of the FLS, 32-year-old Glory Davis, a first grade teacher from Miami, 
wrote an op-ed for the New York Times that explained her stance on the country's division. She wrote in part, we are ready for our female-led society. We are ready for the unobstructed inclusion of women in the leadership of our society. We, the women and men of the FLS do hereby declare this day is the commencement of our female-led society. Let no man stand in our way. Let every man and woman stand with us for the betterment of our world. The day after the op-ed appeared, an airplane flew a banner around New York City's Times Square that read, FLS, you and what army? The reply from the FLS was swift and silent. At 11.23 a.m. the following day, in every time zone across the globe, every yellow bandana wearing FLS supporter walked out of their jobs. Duplicated in every time zone for 24 hours, the demonstration paralyzed the major parts of the industrialized world, exhibiting the power of the FLS. Unlike the male supremacy agitators, the FLS supporters did not return to work the next day. In less than a week, the stock market crashed. International trade ceased and pleas from world leaders to go back to work were ignored. With the weakened trust and authority of the government, respect for law enforcement diminished and mayhem ensued. Under the leadership of Gloria of Glory Davis, the FLS formed a de facto law enforcement team to restore order and come to the aid of communities who were suffering because of the strike. Glory's special forces collected food and clothing to disperse to those in need, offered medical aid to the ailing, emotional support to those who were frightened, and they were sure to let the bullies know that they were being watched. Glory sent out her special forces teams around the globe to reach those who had not even been impacted by the strike. As word of her loving organizational skills spread, world leaders and intelligent women and men offered their support and allegiance. Two months after the strike began, Glory announced that it was over. The next day, everyone went back to work. Relieved and grateful, one by one, they came to ask for a seat at her table. They all appreciated her gentle guidance, and most of all, they were enamored by her essence of a mother's love. She never arrested the male supremacist agitators. She called them in to speak with her and to hear their fears and grievances. She assured them that she loved them and would protect and guide them all in the same manner that she would protect and guide women. And they believed her. Eventually, Glory was asked to help reorganize the weakened governments. And she carefully selected seven women and a team of organizational specialists to assist her. She placed the seven women as leaders of the newly formed communities and created government roles to assist the women in serving the citizens. Proud of her work, she took the title of Shia and defined it as powerful feminine ruler. As a token of appreciation for standing with her, she shared her title with the other seven women leading their respective communities. Since then, the focus has been on everyone pitching in to bring the best policies and programs to our communities. There have been a few small issues with resistance, but nothing that she or Glory can't handle. That incredible story told through her mom's eyes makes Rain feel awe each time she thinks about Glory. She tried to imagine what it would be like for men to express hatred towards her, but she could not. Raised under the guidance of our FLS, every man she knows is supportive and loving towards her. She is definitely not lacking the love of a man so she doesn't have to yearn for it. Rain had never experienced the turmoil or degradation that women were said to have experienced before the shift. For as long as she could remember, she had been encouraged by her mother and every adult she met. She had been told that as a young woman, she held a special intellect and power that she could choose to use for the good of the world. Many mentors, both women and men, promised her that one day she could be Shia Supreme if she worked hard. She grew up with the expectation that she could be anything, and she decided she wanted to be a Shia. At only 23 years old, Rain received a coveted invitation to join the aristocrats. 
In our female-led society, the aristocrats are an elite class of citizens who are selected for their outstanding contributions to improve the quality of life in our society. Aristocrats are government employees who receive government housing, class distinction, and funding to continue their work for 10 years. There are currently a little more than 100 active aristocrats. 65% describe themselves as female, 25% describe themselves as men, and the other use other gender descriptions. Citizens who are appointed as aristocrats have been honored for groundbreaking social work like eradicating HIV, initiating a free-form education model based on skill and interest, and organizing a special forces team to protect the environment. Each year, hundreds of industrious citizens across the globe are nominated for the prize distinction, yet only 10 will receive the honor of becoming an aristocrat. Similar to old world royalty, aristocrats become the subject of media attention, favor, and celebration because aristocrats form the only pool of citizens that can advance to one day become a Shia. Rain was nominated to become an aristocrat twice before being appointed to the position at the age of 23. With the encouragement of her parents, Rain decided that she would place herself on the track to become a Shia when she was only 14. Although she experienced emotions like resentment, anger, disgust, and helplessness, she was warned not to indulge in them, which led to her belief that she was not a good person if she was experiencing bad emotions. This self-judgment decreased her confidence and impacted her social life and education in a negative way. The effect on her ability to interact with others and make progress in life led to even more of these negative feelings. After a discussion with her mother about why she couldn't openly express all of the emotions that were natural to her, she decided that she could and she would within certain constraints. By the time Rain was 15, she experimented with ways to express the so-called negative emotions constructively, and she shared her ideas in a self-published book. Her ideas gained attention from the psychology community, and she was encouraged to do studies with teens. With careful nurturing and instruction, Rain created a model of therapy to help ease angst over aggressive feelings, citing them as natural and helpful to the, to the development of teens. By age 18, she had presented her theory and findings at more than a dozen psychology fairs and won awards for her work. She used her creative multimedia talents to share her ideas through audio, digital, and bloom casting, a state-of-the-art communication tool that emits vibrational energy through sound. She was not the only teenager inspired to set themselves up to become a world leader. All children are introduced to the prospect of leading the world through innovative pursuits, yet only a small number produce initiatives that incite significant change. When young children are asked what they want to be when they grow up, a common response is, I want to be a Shia. New aristocrats participate in a leadership academy and work with several mentors to strengthen their organizational leadership skills. Three years into her work as an aristocrat, Rain now oversees a 12-person team who help to encourage emotional acceptance and bridge humanity with the authenticity of being human. Rain smiles when she thinks of her close encounters with Glory, the Shia Supreme. She first met her during her inauguration to the aristocrats. Glory came up to her, gave her a congratulatory hug, thanked her for doing such important work, and smiled. Every year since, Rain makes sure to say hello during their annual aristocrats gala, an elegant evening hosted by a different community each year. Last year, the gala was held in Europe, and this year it will be in Asia. I have two weeks to find a dress and a date, Rain reminds herself. Since young people are taught that romantic relationships are fun and enriching, but not mandatory, she often used the bring a date option to introduce her old friends to her new circle. It's not that Rain doesn't experience attraction or sexual urges. It's just that the excitement she feels when she is attracted to someone does not compare to the joy she feels when her team and programs excel. Two weeks! She squeals and then heads to her bedroom for a dose of inspiration. She walks over to her closet and reaches toward the back. Her fingertips grasp 
the soft lavender box and ret she retrieves it before sitting down on the floor. Her eyes light up as she opens the box. Inside is a sterling silver head chain, similar to the diamond encrusted ones worn by the Shias. She places the head chain on her head, smooths her hair, and smiles at a reflection in the wall length mirror. I am a Shia too, Rain affirms herself. I am. In this moment, she experiences a flash of inspiration. <gasps> I know who to bring with me to the Aristocrats Gala. I hope he's free.